Hello again, bonsai friends. Uh, today I want to introduce you to one of my favorite native species to use for bonsai. It's the Canada plum, sometimes called the American plum, or the black plum. The, the species is Prunus nigra. Now, it's slightly ironic that I describe this as one of my favorite species for bonsai because, in fact, my, uh, my luck with this species has been marked considerably by little disasters involving the local rodent population. Um, on several occasions, I've had squirrels and this year rabbits and sometimes voles nibble these things down. So as bonsai, my plums are not really in a great state of bonsai development. But I want to show you the characteristics of the plant that I think make it really, really nicely suited for bonsai in the hopes that some of you will take a chance with one. All right. So here is one I've been growing for, I don't know, probably six or seven years from a cutting. You won't see this species offered um, in the trade. I've never seen it. I stumbled upon it literally because there was one growing in uh, my parents' yard, in the yard I grew up in, that showed up all by itself. Squirrel must have planted the pit. And um, in my late 20s, when I started getting interested in bonsai, I recognized that its natural zigzag growth pattern, its relatively small leaves, its flowering cycle, it is covered in white, yellow scented, sweet smelling flowers just prior to the leaf bud break. Um, and it's, it's constant natural ramification. Oh, there goes the backdrop. You can tell I don't concentrate too much on getting a professional look to my videos. All of these features, uh, to me, make them very well suited for bonsai. And um, as I said, the one downfall is they're really attractive to nibble on by rodents. Well, it is May 7th, 2020. We had an unusually mild winter for the most part. And uh, so this may be quite ahead of its normal development for the time of year. But I am already at the point today where it's time for me to do some shoot pruning or leaf pruning on this to encourage even more ramification. This is a, a very vigorously growing species and you'll easily get three or four or five ramification cycles out of it. And um, in common with most deciduous bonsai, uh, the, the process is very simple. Um, unlike maples, which have opposite budding patterns, the plum, like apples and cherries and those things, uh, has alternating uh, leafing patterns. So to encourage ramification um, and also encourage branching in the directions you want, one of the simple tricks you can do, and I always cut down to the second or third or leaf uh, on a stem, and in the case of these alternate leafed species, if you clip just above a leaf that's pointing in the direction you'd like your branch to go, <laughs> that's the way it's going to grow. In other words, if I clip right before this leaf here, then this will be the direction of a new bud that comes out at the base of that leaf axle. All right. If I clip it just after this one, then this will be the direction that the next branch will grow in. Um, I do not do a lot of wiring on these plums because they have such a naturally interesting zigzag growth pattern and frankly I found that they don't really seem to take to wiring. I get branch die off a lot. I think the cambium breaks very easily and if you try to twist and bend too much you find you just lose the branch. So to, uh, to prune something like this, um, I'm looking at where do I want the branches to go. and so. Uh, on, let's say on this shoot here, I will just clip this one off so that we will get the new growth going uh, that way on the branch. All right. So we just work our way through. 
I'm going to snip these down pretty tight because I really want to restrict the growth. Here's an example of one that's budding that way and I'd rather have a branch breaking in that direction away from the trunk than this way toward the trunk so I just simply snip there. This one's going to get shortened way down. A lot of these are ultimately going to be uh, removed entirely. Branches and you know tips of a branch is going to be removed entirely. But for now I'm just looking at the development of the thing as a whole, like things growing in here, probably not sticking around for long. Just looking at the direction things are pointing. Very simple operation and within days there will be new buds popping out from this, from, from the base of each leaf uh, axle. So unless another breeze comes along to knock off my backdrop again, um, I think you can see where you would go with this. There's branches coming off down here. I would use them and probably remove some of this top here. So you just design by clipping and growing. This is where the apex is really going to be up in here. All right. This long branch here is going to get shortened and shortened so that I have this line that's coming up like so. Um, they're really delightful little trees, and if I can devise a way to keep the rodents off them in the winter time, they only take four or five years to develop into something really cool. They also get nice, uh, mature bark at a small size, and they thicken up real well. So, the uh, Canadian black plum, Prunus nigra, if you can find them sprouting in the woods, um, I grew all mine from cuttings. I never collected a single one, I did them as cuttings. And um, I think they're a very rewarding species.